Uh, hello guys, uh, welcome to Online Academy. Today I'm going to take you through this tutorial on sufficient statistics. Okay, so um, jump straight into the definition of sufficiency. The proper definition of sufficiency says uh, let x1 through xn be a random symbol from a probability distribution with unknown parameter theta. Then the statistic y is equal to u of x1 to xn is said to be sufficient for theta if the conditional distribution of x1 through xn given the statistic y does not depend on the parameter theta. Okay, so yeah, this might be a bit confusing, but in layman terms, what we are trying to say uh, is that a sufficient statistic is a statistic that summarizes all the information contained in a sample so that one would make the same parameter estimate whether we give them the whole sample or just the statistic itself. Okay, so in short, uh, this statistic reduces our data without information loss. Okay. So that's what we're trying to say here. So uh, let's get into an example where we can use this definition to try and identify if a given statistic is a sufficient statistic. Okay, so I have this example here, uh, which is a Bernoulli trial. So it says let x1 through xn be a random symbol of n Bernoulli trials in which x1 is what that, 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 that okay but uh, the important point here is that uh, we have a Bernoulli distribution okay so that's the important issue and then uh, our parameter here is p so we're saying if xi is equal to 1 uh, the probability that xi is equal to 1 is p and the other way around is 1 minus p okay so the question here is asking is y is equal to summation of xi from i is equal to 1 to n uh, sufficient for p okay so y is our statistic here but we want to determine if y is sufficient for p okay so uh using uh, the definition uh, the definition said okay let's get back here a little. the definition is saying that uh, if the conditional distribution of x1 through xn given the statistic y does not depend on the parameter uh, that's when we know that it is a sufficient statistic. Okay. So here what we are trying to say is that uh, uh, we have the probability uh, of x1 is equal to x1, uh, x2 is equal to x2 up to xn is equal to xn given y is equal to y. Uh, this probability uh, must not depend on p for y to be a sufficient statistic. Okay. <laughs> So from conditional probability, we know that this probability is equal to uh, the probability of the same probability of x1 is equal to x1, x2 is equal to x2, up to xn is equal to xn, and then we also have uh, y is equal to y here. So, so in short, or from the rules of conditional probability was saying the probability of this one applied by this one or the event where all this okay at once uh, then we divide all this by the probability of y is equal to y okay but then uh, we know uh, that our Bernoulli PMF Bernoulli PMF uh, it says p to the x multiplied by 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x okay and then for the statistic y which is called to x1 plus x2 plus up to xn uh, in short this is the summation of xi from i is called to 1 to n which we are saying is called to y in this case the pmf for this guy will now be n uh, choose y then p to the power y into 1 minus p to the power n minus y okay so what we're going to do we are going to substitute these pmfs into this expression here 
all right so for the probability of x1 to xn and also y is equal to y at the same time uh what we are doing here is we are multiplying these pmf since they are independent the axis are independent so it's sort of p of x1 into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x1 multiplied by p of x2 to 1 minus p uh, multiplied by 1 minus x2 up to p of xn to 1 minus p 1 minus x n all right something like this then divided by the pmf of y which we say this n y p to y uh 1 minus p to the power n minus y okay like this so this is sort of the product so when you multiply that okay in fact you can write it this way is the product from i is equal to 1 to n of p to the power x i into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus x i all over uh, n p to y p to the y 1 minus p to the power n minus y okay like this so going on with this uh, expression on top becomes p to the power summation of x i into 1 minus p to the power n minus summation of xi all over n is y this one is still like this one minus p four n minus y okay but uh we know from our uh, question which said uh, y is equal to summation of xi all right so here on the summation of xi we can substitute with y which we said uh, y is equal to y which is summation of x y so we are going to say p to the power y into 1 minus p to the power n minus y all over n plus y p to the power y uh, 1 minus p to the power n minus y okay so as you can see this expression is the same as this part so we can cancel these two and then we get 1 over n plus y so and it is clear that this answer does not depend on the parameter p hence we can conclude that y is a sufficient statistic for the parameter p since its conditional probability given y does not depend on p okay so this is our proof but uh, usually on some distributions it is difficult to use this method to determine if a certain statistic is a sufficient statistic so that's where we go on to uh, the methods that we use to determine if a statistic is a sufficient statistic okay so the first one is the factorization theorem and this is the most common one so by definition uh, the factorization theorem says uh, we are given x1 through xn which are random variables with a joint probability or with the joint probability mass function uh, f x1 to xn that depends on the parameter theta then the statistic y is called to u of x1 through xn is sufficient for theta if and only if the pdf or pmf can be factored into two components okay the first one uh, is the component that depends on the parameter theta through our sufficient statistic okay and then the other one depends only on the x i's and does not depend on the parameter theta okay so i think to understand this better uh, let's get into some examples we are going to determine some sufficient statistics as you get used to the theory okay so uh, the first example is saying let x1 to x and a random sample from a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. So find a sufficient statistic for the parameter lambda. Okay. So here uh, before we get into our calculations, uh, we said that uh, all right, let's rewrite uh, the the form the factorization theorem. So here we have uh, x of x1 x2 through xn uh, 
depending on lambda. Uh, so we have to factor this into two components. The first one, which we said is this function, uh, which depends on lambda through the expression or through the function of the sufficient statistics of our sufficient statistic for this one, uh, which is u of x1 through xn. Okay, like this. Then multiplying another function. All right, here we have uh, another bracket. Multiplying another function, h of x1 through xn, like this. All right. So if we can separate this one into two components like this, then we are good to go. Okay. So, all right, but uh, this one, our function of x1, x2 through xn with lambda uh, for the Poisson distribution this one uh, by independence is like we are multiplying uh, the pdf of each xi up to n okay so it's like uh, f x1 lambda multiplying the second one x2 lambda up to f of xn lambda okay uh, which is the product from i score to 1 to n of uh, our pdf for the poisson distribution is e to the negative lambda uh, lambda the xi over x i factorial like this okay so if we can manage to reduce this expression uh, to give us two functions one which depends on theta and the other one which does not depend on theta then we will be good to go all right so yeah we have uh, e to the negative n lambda then lambda the summation of xi all over the product of xi Factorial like this, all right. <laughs> so, uh, we can rewrite this as e to the negative n lambda, some then lambda to the summation of xi multiplying one over the product of xi factorials. You can write this as that, or you can say x1 factorial, x2 factorial, up to xn factorial. Okay, so looking at what we have here. We can see that uh, this part uh, depends only on the xi's and then we have this part which depends on the parameter lambda but also through uh, the statistic uh, summation of xi all right so here uh, the part this part here which we said uh, u of x1 through xn is our sufficient statistic so if we can get that part, uh, which is lambda and the sufficient statistic, okay, that way we'll be able to get our sufficient statistic. Okay. So here we can see this is the age of x1, x2 through xn, and then here a uh, summation of xi will be our u of x1 through xn which is our sufficient statistic okay so this is how we determine uh, the sufficient statistic for this one okay then uh to get more used to this factorization theorem let's get to the next example uh the next example is saying let x1 x2 xn be a random symbol from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance one find the sufficient statistic for the parameter mu okay so uh, to find the sufficient statistic for the normal distribution uh, let's first of all write uh, our factorization theorem we are saying f of x1 x2 up to xn and then here our parameter is mu so we have to be able to separate uh, this one into two components which we said the first one 
uh, depends on the parameter mu this one depends on the parameter mu through our sufficient statistic which is u of x1 through xn all right so here our parameter is mu sorry then this other component which depends on the x i is only up to xn all right this so uh, our pm f for the normal distribution uh yeah okay let's get here yeah, we're well, having the product from i is power to one to n and then the pm for the normal is one over two pi to the power half then e to the negative one over two xi minus mu squared okay so this is what we have here then what i show we are going to work around with this one try to reduce it and separate it so that we can get two components one which depends on the parameter mu and the other one which does not depend on the parameter mu okay so working around with this uh we are going to say here is one over two pi to the n over two e to the negative uh, one over two summation oh sorry i want to write this summation from i squared to one to n of xi minus mu squared all right so okay uh, i think i will need a little bit of more space here so let me start from here then we are going to say uh, 1 over 2 pi to the power n over 2 this part is fine then e to the power negative 1 over 2 uh, summation of so what you're going to do in this bracket uh, for us to simplify this easily we are going to add a zero okay so how are we adding a zero here we are saying xi uh, minus x bar plus x bar so here we have x minus x bar plus x bar which gives us a zero so we've just added a zero uh, mathematically it doesn't change anything all right but it makes our calculation easier for this one and then subtract mu squared all right then we go on and say one over two pi the power n over two e uh, negative one over two uh, summation of so we are going to all right so to square this easily uh, we are going to deal with this as one component and this one is one component all right so here we have xi minus x bar squared plus uh, two xi minus x bar multiplied by x bar minus mu then plus x bar minus mu squared like this okay then uh, this one is a bit longer but we are getting the 1 over 2 pi to the power n over 2 e to the negative uh, 1 over 2 so here yeah, what we are going to do is to distribute the summation into that expression all right so here we have uh, summation of xi minus x bar plus uh, 2 into x bar minus mu this one is a number because there are no xi's then summation of uh, xi minus x bar plus summation of x bar minus mu squared all right this one is just the same okay then uh, let's go on and simplify one over two pi n over two e okay i think this one over two can also be distributed inside and that way we get negative one over two summation of xi minus x bar but then uh, what I want you to see here is that uh, 
the summation of xi minus ax bar from i is equal to 1 to n will give us a zero all right uh, i'm sure this is a known fact and you can try it with some examples this one will give you zero okay so that automatically makes this whole part a zero since it is not playing this one so uh what we have here we have negative this one plus mm, we have one over two n summation of that one you give us an n here x bar minus mu squared like this all right then going on oh, oh sorry yeah i left a squared yeah this one is squared sorry for missing that one uh so uh we can rewrite this one as one over two pi to the power n over two e to the negative one over two summation of xi minus x bar squared all right but uh from the laws of indices we know that uh, if the powers are adding uh, it, we can take this down and multiply here and get e to the one over two n into x bar minus mu squared all right so from this we can see that uh, we have two components the first expression here this one does not depend on the parameter mu okay so this will be our h x1 so x2 up to xn all right this will be that component and this one the component which depends on the parameter mu through the statistic which we are looking for so uh, this one will be the other component that we have over there and uh, this part the x bar will be our sufficient statistic okay so x bar will be a sufficient statistic for mu this is what it simply means all right so this is how we go about uh, the factorization theory and for the normal distribution x bar is a sufficient statistic for mu all right yeah, i think this is uh how we do it but uh, since uh, I can feel like some of you still are not getting there let's have uh, one more example on the factorization theory all right so uh, our next example is the exponential distribution all right so for the exponential distribution all right let x1 through xn be a random sample from the exponential distribution with parameter theta find a sufficient statistic for the parameter theta all right our factorization theorem tells us that uh, f of x1 x2 through xn and uh, the parameter theta if we can separate this into two components the first one which depends on the parameter theta through the function u of x1 x2 through xn like this and the other component which does not depend on the parameter theta but only depends on the xi's up to xn like this one all right <coughs> so we know the exponential distribution uh what i want to say by independence we have uh, the product from i is equal to one to n of our f of x i's uh, depending on theta and uh, the p there for the exponential distribution yeah we have uh, it says one over theta e to the negative x i over theta all right like this <coughs> so uh, let's work with this and try to separate it into two components um so here we have one over theta to the power n e to the negative summation of xi over theta all right uh so here we have this expression but as you can see uh, the part of the expression which we have here 
depends on theta all right but then uh we can go about it like this e to the negative okay is one over theta summation of xi but then we can multiply this by a one all right and uh, as we know the rules of mathematics allow us to say that this one depends on x1 through xn because uh, maybe it's an x to the power zero or something which gives us a one so we're going to say this one is the other component which only depends on x x2 through xn like this and then this one <coughs> Is the component uh, which depends on the parameter theta through our sufficient statistic all right so uh, it then simply means that this part here is our sufficient statistic okay so you say your y is equal to summation of xi which is a sufficient statistic for the parameter theta all right and I think now you are getting uh, where we are coming from and where we are going in this one all right so if you can manage to separate your pdf or a pmf into these two components one which depends on the xis and the other one which depends on the parameter for that particular distribution through the sufficient statistic all right so when you see the component which depends on the uh, on the parameter all right the other part which is x in it is simply the sufficient statistic for that parameter all right so this is uh, all we have on the factorization theorem then uh but then there's another method which we have and uh, this method was derived from the factorization theorem but this one is a bit easy uh, to handle uh, these questions on finding the sufficient statistic all right so uh let's get into the exponential form to determine the sufficient statistic all right so the exponential form is saying let x1 through xn be a random sample from a distribution with a pdf or a pmf of the exponential form fx theta is called to exponential m that 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 all right so you need to memorize uh, this form so that uh, when you will be working through uh, trying to identify a sufficient statistic you will need to play around with your expressions until you get to that form all right so in that form here we have uh, kx which is the sufficient statistic and depends only on x then p theta is the function which depends on the parameter theta then sx is another function which depends on x only and then we have also another function q of theta which is another function which depends on the parameter theta only all right so if you get uh, your expression into this form you automatically know that kx is your sufficient statistic okay Okay, so uh, let's get into an example so that we can understand how we deal with the exponential form. Right. So here our example is saying uh, let x1 through xn be a random sample from a geometric distribution with parameter p. Find a sufficient statistic for the parameter p. Okay, so okay, first of all, let's, let's start by writing uh, the exponential form so that you will be able to see where we are going. So the exponential form says that uh, we have a function fx with parameter theta and if it can be expressed in the form of e to the power of kx uh, p of theta plus sx plus q of theta okay uh, then y is called to summation of the kx is the sufficient statistic all right like this is the sufficient statistic okay so we just need uh, to work around with our, with our functions so that we get to this uh, to this form here and then from there we have our sufficient statistic okay so for the geometric distribution uh, 
we have f x okay the parameter here is p so say if p is equal to the distribution says p multiplied by 1 minus p to the power of x minus 1 like this okay so to express this in exponential form we are going to say this is equal to e to the lean of p multiplied by 1 minus p to the x minus 1 okay so this is how we get to the exponential form so then going on with our expression applying the laws of logarithms we say e to the lean of p plus lean of 1 minus p x minus 1 like this then we go on and uh, play around with our laws of logarithms if e the logarithm of p plus uh, the okay here we are going to take down the power so we say x minus 1 then log of 1 minus p like this right so i think for me we can see that this component which is uh, which depends on the parameter only uh, is this part of our expression which depends on the parameter only all right but we need to work around with the other one and see where we are going all right and try to get the other components so here we say e to the then p plus x the log of one minus p subtracting little one minus p like this all right uh, but you can see that these two components they both depend on the parameter and maybe we can make them one so here we have e to the x lean one minus p plus lean of p minus one minus p from the loss of logarithms i think this is correct all right so we here we have this component which depends on both the x and uh, the parameter p so this part will be our kx and uh, the next part will be our p of theta which depends on the parameter but then here we don't have the component which depend on x only but then uh, we can add a zero all right and we know that uh, lean one is equal to zero so maybe it's sort of x lean one or something so this component will be our sx like this and this one will be our q of theta but all right in this case our parameter is p so it's q of p like this <laughs> and then this part here is the p of theta okay but here the parameter is p sorry it's becomes sort of like that and then this x will be our kx all right so <clears throat> Well, like what we said here we said y is equal to summation of kx is the sufficient statistic all right so here our kx is equal to x so what you can say is y is equal to summation of kx which is x is the sufficient statistic all right like this so it means y is equal to summation of x is sufficient for p so this is exponential theorem and as you can see it's a bit easier than the factorization theorem so uh, let's get to one more example is we master the exponential theorem and uh, a point to notice that uh, all those other distribution which we did using the factorization theorem they can also be done using the exponential form you can also get the sufficient statistic using exponential form and from my personal experience the exponential form is a bit easier to go about than the factorization theorem all right since the exponential form is a simplification of the factorization theorem so uh, let me pick one more example from the examples that we worked uh, using the exponential uh, using the factorization theorem all right so i'm going to take uh the poisson distribution right so 
from the Boston distribution, we had, or first of all, let us write uh, our expression for the exponential form, which is fx theta uh, is equal to e to the kx p of theta plus sx plus q of theta all right from this then uh, y is equal to summation of kx is sufficient for theta all right so this is uh what we know from the exponential form all right so <clears throat> uh, taking the Poisson distribution we have fx with parameter lambda uh, and the function is e to the negative lambda lambda to the power x over x factorial all right so if we can express this one in exponential form then it then we can get our sufficient statistic from there so to express this one is in exponential form we do what we did from the last example e to the ln of e to the negative lambda lambda the x of x factorial like this then we apply some laws of logarithms to simplify the expression so we have e to the lean e to the negative lambda plus lean lambda to the power of x subtract lean x factorial like this okay then we go on and simplify this we have e to the negative lambda lean e and lean e we know that it gives us a one then we add uh, here we have x lean lambda subtracting lean x factorial okay like this so which is e to the negative lambda plus x lean lambda subtract lean x factorial all right so from this expression uh, we can see that we have this component which depends on the parameter only so this is our q of lambda from that one that was q of theta but in this case our parameter is lambda so if q of lambda then this part here will be our kx <coughs> and then the other one uh, will give us the p of lambda and then uh, this one is the part which depends on the parameter x uh, which depends on the x eyes on uh, so this will be our sx like this all right so we can see that uh, our expression is now in exponential form and to get our sufficient statistic we say y is equal to summation of kx and kx is equal to x so this is equal to summation of x uh, is sufficient for our parameter lambda okay. like this so this is the exponential form and uh you can go on and do the other distributions like uh, the normal distribution and the exponential distribution uh, you can get the assumptions of six using the exponential form so now you can try to do those on your own and comparing the sufficient statistics that you get uh, with the ones that we get when we're using the, the factorization theory okay so thank you guys for watching this is all we have today and we hope uh, this was helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel